A Florida man high on mushrooms caused chaos on a flight. A Florida man pulled a large knife out at the gym. Two Florida fathers shot each other's daughters during a road rage incident. And a Florida car rental company found a toddler left in a returned vehicle. These are the weird stories for Friday on Weird AF News, and they are all from one state. And one state only, and that is Florida, that magical place where fantastic citizen behavior and engagement is going on. Yes, let's celebrate the state of Florida today on Weird AF News. It's Florida Friday! A Florida man high on magic mushrooms caused chaos on a flight from Miami. A United Airlines flight from Miami to Washington was a bad trip. In more ways than one, after a passenger attacked the crew members, the passenger is a Florida man. The passenger was high on a chemical called psilocybin. Are you guys familiar with psilocybin, man? It's also known as magic mushrooms, man. Yeah, they're magical. I once grew them in my kitchen, man. All right, shh, don't tell nobody, man. According to this affidavit, about an hour into the United Airlines Flight 2116, Florida man... Sheru Sevilla began exhibiting, quote, disturbing and uncontrolled behavior, as Florida men often do. But it's all it's often difficult to discern what's causing the uncontrolled behavior. Is it the psilocybin man or is it the Florida man blood running through his veins? According to the affidavit, Florida man Sevilla was trying to break into the locked lavatory and broke off a piece of the door, finally opening it while another passenger was inside, also known as frightening behavior. Also, it says here, Sevilla wandered around the plane, just wandering around, tripping balls. You know how that goes. He was running up and down the aisle, they say. Yelling obscenities. Doesn't say what the obscenities were, but you can imagine. Also, the Florida man was... Standing next to the cockpit door and clapping loudly. (laughs) That's a little odd. (laughs) Maybe just trying to give props to the pilot. You know, no one ever gives props to the pilot. No one ever claps for the damn pilot. You know, the pilot's got your life in his hands or her hands. You know, maybe sometimes clap for the pilot. Give him a dap or a high five. Florida man knows what's up. Uh, Sevilla got in other passengers' faces, it says, into their faces and staring and smiling at them, according to an FBI agent. Oh, that's like super creepy. Just just smiling at the passengers. I would just assume this guy's going to blow up the plane at that point. Sevilla would not remain seated after the flight attendants asked him to remain seated. Instead, he screamed and his outbursts grew louder. At one point, he was lying on the floor of the airplane He jumped up and twisted a flight attendant's breast. (laughs) What the hell? This guy. My goodness. (laughs) This poor flight attendant. It says she asked him to calmly take his seat, and that's when he twisted her titty. (laughs) This guy's going to jail for an intoxicated titty twister. (laughs) Uh, Other flight attendants and passengers and law enforcement on the flight had to finally subdue him. An officer eventually handcuffed Sevilla, who continued to yell what they're calling incoherent things for the remainder of the flight. In a post-flight interview, Florida man Sevilla admitted to consuming psilocybin at the Miami International Airport before boarding the flight and claimed to remember being out of his seat, being loud and touching people. I remember touching people, particularly a titty. This is not the first time that Sevilla has consumed psilocybin, he says, and he said he was not totally surprised that he acted this way after consuming it. Nah, I'm, I'm not surprised I acted that way. <laughs> it's pretty normal behavior for me after I take the mushrooms. You know, I twist titties, I yell incoherent crap, I clap for whoever's driving the vehicle I'm in. Am I sorry? Hell no. I'm a Florida man and flying is boring. A Florida man is banned from a gym for pulling out a knife. A man has walked out of jail and is sharing his side of a confrontation at a South Florida gym where he's accused of some unruly behavior that led to him lashing out and pulling out a knife. 57-year-old Lennon Sanchez bonded out of jail after he was arrested for pulling a knife inside a gym. This was after he was accused of displaying some inappropriate behavior towards a couple inside the gym that was working out. 
Florida man Sanchez is seen on a cell phone video holding the knife inside the L.A. Fitness on Monday. He was obviously arrested and appeared in court. Um, he got out on bond. He has some priors, it says here, including prior robbery convictions. He went to state prison. He has been charged with aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. He gave his side of the story, though, to the news. So we're going to explore that a little bit and see if it makes any sense. You know, when a Florida man wants to give his side of the story, guys, we really should listen. They usually make sense. Now, he said his rage all started when he was caught checking out another man's girlfriend at the gym. Okay. Sounds like the start of a fight, but let's keep going. He said, the girl, the girl, you know, she looked real nice. She looked so nice, you know. I just took a quick look, you know. I was just taking a quick look. But Florida man Sanchez did more than just take a quick look. He began to record this girl with his phone while she was working out. Her boyfriend was at the gym working out and saw all this take place. The boyfriend's name is Kuslan Khan. I don't know if you want to mess with the girlfriend of anybody named Kuslan Khan. Sounds like he'll rip your head off and put it on a pike. Khan was quoted as saying, Yeah, it got a little bit weird at the gym when he pulled out his cell phone, started positioning the cell phone behind her, behind my girlfriend. You know? Sanchez defended himself for shooting video of her, saying, Yo, any man is going to look, you know? Any man's going to look. She was a fine girl. She started squatting real nice. I like it when they squat, you know. I won't shoot video when they squat. Now, on the cell phone video of the interaction, Khan tells Florida man Sanchez, Yo, do you mind not doing that? To which Sanchez replied, Oh, but your girlfriend's fine, bro. What's wrong with that? I can look at her if I want to. Come on now. She's so fine. That's when Khan threatened Sanchez, who went into the locker room and came back with a knife. And he's seen in the crowded gym approaching Khan with the knife. And that's when Khan fled to the parking lot and he got a pistol. Oh, I will raise you. I'll see your knife and raise you a pistol. On the cell phone video, you can hear Sanchez go, Oh, I didn't know you had a gun. <laughs> I didn't know you. Oh, I would have got my... I would have got my gun if I knew you had a gun. Come on, man. Let me know if you had a gun. <laughs> oh, this is unreal, man. An off-duty officer happened to be in the area and is seen on video bringing down Sanchez and his knife in the parking lot. Sanchez is no longer allowed back at the L.A. Fitness. Sanchez was quoted as saying, I'm just sad that they banned me from L.A. Fitness. Yay! Florida dads are accused of shooting each other's daughters. Two Florida men who are fathers are each facing attempted murder charges after they allegedly shot at each other's daughters during a road rage incident. Oh, this sounds like a daughter swap gone wrong. <laughs> uh, let's get the names of the Florida degenerates. William Joseph Hale, Frank Gilliard Allison, they were both arrested after a cat-and-mouse high-speed chase on Highway 1 in Nassau County. The two men began arguing with each other on the road while driving aggressively and brake-checking each other. According to the media, things got so intense, a witness told the county sheriff's deputies that he knew something bad was going to happen. There's a quote from a witness. They were both speeding and driving recklessly northbound to Jacksonville and then into Nassau County on US-1, brake checking, trying to cut each other off. They obviously didn't like the way the other one was driving, so they were both acting like idiots, I think. Bunch of idiots. According to the police, at one point during the encounter, Hale, who was driving a Dodge Ram, drove up alongside Allison's Nissan and began shouting at him to pull over. That's when the front passenger of the Nissan put her hand out the window and flipped the other vehicle off with her middle finger. I assume that's the young daughter. As Allison rolled his window down to shout at Hale, someone from the Dodge Ram threw a plastic water bottle into his car. Okay, so now they got projectiles involved. The driver of the Nissan then grabbed his big sour... Big sour? Big sore? I don't know how to pronounce this. It's a forty-five caliber automatic handgun is what you should know. Um, a shot was fired at the other truck before driving away at a high rate of speed. The bullet entered the right rear passenger door of Hale's Dodge Ram and struck his five-year-old daughter in the leg. How sad and unnecessary. Well, of course, after Hale realized his daughter had been shot, he's like, you know what? We're not going to drive to the hospital. 
I'm a Florida man. I also have a gun. So he sped up to the Nissan, took out his Glock 9mm semi-automatic handgun and began firing at Allison's car. Three of Hale's bullets struck the car, one hitting his 14-year-old uh, in the back, causing a collapsed lung. It's unbelievable. After the second child was shot, Hale and Allison spotted a patrol car, pulled over, and argued face-to-face -face until the deputy broke up the scuffle. I love how both of their daughters are bleeding and they pull over to have an argument still. <laughs> wow, are you okay, bro? Of course, the deputy intervened and stopped the fighting between the two men. And the two girls were taken to a nearby hospital, and the injuries sustained by both girls were not fatal, thank goodness. Upon arrest, Florida man Allison told investigators that he just wanted to, quote, get out of the whole scenario, which is why he fired the shot. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's very rational thinking. Uh, you want to get out of the scenario, so you fired your gun. Instead of just getting out of the scenario, you know. You're in a vehicle. You could just drive away, and now you're out of the scenario, sir. This is what's called Florida man logic, and it's if you escalate the situation to the maximum, it just goes full circle and then begins to de-escalate, you know? Or perhaps the approach in Florida is just to keep escalating until one of you runs out of bullets. Eventually, someone's going to run out of bullets. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow, it's almost like it could be a good idea to not let every other Florida man degenerate carry a gun. What do you think of this crazy idea that I'm, I'm pro proposing? At the end of the day, the scariest aspect of this story is that they're breeding, guys. The Florida men, they're breeding, guys, they're breeding! A Florida car rental facility found a child left in a returned vehicle. Deputies arrested a Florida grandpa after Hertz car rental employees found a child inside a returned vehicle at Daytona Beach International Airport. Deputies at the airport were called to the Hertz rental lot after one of the employees told the police the toddler was found in a locked vehicle in the car return parking lot. Oh my goodness, how long was this child in a locked car with the windows up in a Florida hot-ass parking lot. Shh. This could be, I mean, I assume the child lived, but this could have been a much worse disaster. When the deputies arrived, they found the employee holding the child, whose face was streaked with dried tears, they say. The toddler was still breathing normally, thankfully. The child, just under the age of two, was scared and hot, they said, but otherwise in good health after being checked by the paramedics. So this was a close call, man. According to the officials, the vehicle had been returned about 45 minutes earlier. The kid was in there for 45 minutes. Whew. I mean, they got this kid at the nick of time, man. Congrats to these Hertz employees. Now, it says here when the rental car staff tried to reach out to the driver, their calls were unsuccessful. However, eventually a call came in from the child's mother, who had just learned that the child's grandfather left the toddler in the rental car not at his home, as he had told her he had done. Oh, boy. This is the moment where Grandpa's no longer allowed to babysit. Eek. So sad, so sad when Grandpa can't be alone with the child. Oh, no. So sad when Grandpa starts to put on those diapers. I think this Florida man has hit that moment, though, guys. There's like a moment that we all hit in life where you're no longer allowed to be alone with the children and your, your bladder doesn't work quite right. <laughs> it's a... Uh, now, through interviews, detectives have confirmed that 62-year-old David Towner... 62 is a little young to be forgetting that you, you're babysitting. Ugh, this guy's... This guy needs some help. Uh, Ginkgo biloba, sir. Have you heard of it? 62-year-old David Towner of Port Orange was babysitting his granddaughter for the day and left her in the rental vehicle when he returned it. Authorities said... Uh, Grandpa Towner was remorseful and cooperative with the deputies, but he was charged with one count of child neglect and transported to the jail. Why would you transport him to the jail? Come on. This is like not intentional neglect when you learn that it's a grandpa who's just kind of like a little slow now, you know? Like, what you bring people to jail for and what you don't bring people to jail for confuses me in the state of Florida. I mean, you got all these people out there with 17 bazillion DUIs and yet they bring the grandpa to jail because he's getting forgetful. I mean, you make no sense, Florida. You make no damn sense. It says here, the child was returned to her mother and the Department of Children and Families were notified of this incident. 
Oh, and it also says here, get this, the Hertz employees involved in the incident will receive citizens' awards for their actions. How about that? Round of applause for the Hertz employees. They get a citizens' award for not doing something completely degenerate for one day in their life in Florida. But let's not get too excited, guys. They only give out three Citizens Awards per decade in Florida. (laughs) Yeah, they don't have many of those. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. Hello, my loyal listeners, and thank you for being with me for this episode of Florida Friday. I want to thank everyone who sent me Florida stories to my inbox last couple days. It's been very helpful. You can always email me, funnyjones at gmail.com. If you'd like to call and leave me a message on the voicemail inbox for Weird AF News, the number is 646-450-2012. I'm going to publish a couple phone calls after this. After this outro, if you want to stick around for that, feel free to do so. Call me over the weekend, guys, if you get lonely. 646-450-2012. You can also slide into my DMs on Instagram, at Funny Jones. I got a nice email from Lily, uh, Lily Beaven. She wrote, Dear Jonesy, thank you for making me laugh every day. I listen to your podcast right before I go to bed. I'm pretty sure my bearded dragon, Tater Tot, listens as well. Because he perks up every time I ask my incredibly dumb Alexa to play Weird AF News. Thanks for making us laugh. Oh, thank you for the email, Lily. I'm so I'm so uh, pleased and proud to make you and Tater Tot laugh before bed, for sure. I mean, that's what I'm it's one of my life goals to make Tater Tot laugh. <laughs> you listening to this Tater Tot? Are you? You bearded dragon? All right, I also got a review on Amazon from Patricia Bousset. Boisset. Bousset. Is it Boisset? Boisset. Oh, so, oh, oh. Patricia Boisset. So, so, so. I think I said it right that last time. Uh, Patricia is so um, giving. She gave me five stars. Isn't that something? When you get when I get the five stars, that makes me excited. She wrote, funny AF. I just moved it all the way up on my Lex- Alexa news briefing playlist, so, I, so I'm sure to listen to it prior to getting off of work. He makes me laugh, and that is what we all need to begin our day. Thank you. Isn't this lovely? She's just... It's such a sweet, nice review. Thank you so much, Patricia, for taking the time to write that. I really appreciate that. It's very short and to the point, and um, it's very complimentary as well. It makes me feel good, so I really appreciate that. You made me feel good with the review. If you guys want to leave me a review, there's a few places to do it. Amazon is one of them. It seems to be a popular place to leave a review. If you do, please like screenshot it and then email it to me or reach out. Um, you can tweet it to me or whatever, but like, let me know that you did it so I can give you um, the shout-out that you deserve. You know, anybody takes time to write a review, you get shout out, man, because that takes time. Um, if you don't have any time to write a review, I totally understand it. Maybe you have instead you have time to make a donation. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool way to do it. You can send me a PayPal gift. It's funnyjones at Gmail. That's my PayPal. Or you can go to Weird AF News and buy me a weird, weirdafnews.com, the official site, and buy me a coffee. That's pretty cool. Or you can join the Patreon as well. That's pretty cool. All the cool kids are doing that. They're joining the Patreon, guys. It's patreon.com slash weirdafnews or go to weirdafnews.com and click on the Patreon banner. How about that? And how about you having an awesome weekend, man? I'm really pulling for you this weekend, all right? Don't get arrested, okay? And if you're going to take some psilocybin, man, don't, don't get in a confined space with strangers for hours, man. That's not how you do it, man. It's going to be a bad trip, man. I told you, man. Attention. Calling all remaining weirdos. I want to do a check-in and make sure that all the weirdos out there, part of the Weird AF News fan club, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all might remember me. Finn, haven't called in a while, no, I know, I know, listen, sorry, I've been busy, but I'm back, and I'm here to stay, okay, so, I'm just making a call out, everyone that still remains, I'd like it if y'all could call in, and Jonesy could publish your calls on the next episode, just check in, see how everyone's doing, you know, make sure everyone's okay, 
you know, we've had a pretty crazy past few years, and uh, just want to check in and make sure the club's still going, you know? And, uh, Jonesy, please publish this call. Thank you. Bye. Oh, and uh, also, uh, this is Finn, like I said. Personally, I'm doing pretty good for myself, you know. Made a couple changes in my life, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this. So, yeah. All right. Respond with your own check-in, and like I said, Jonesy, please publish this. Bye. Jonesy! It's Gus from Rochester, New York. It's been a long time. I haven't called in in a while. But I have to concur with Michael up over Iowa City. We love these phone calls in the outro, man. All of us do. We should keep playing them. Another thing, Pink Pigeons. That sounds good. I don't know. Cornish Game Hens. Maybe dye them before you serve them at night. Yeah, that'd be fun. I don't know. I don't know. That was stupid. But, hey, we're all humans, right? So, yeah. Jonesy and I have COVID, too. Well, hopefully you're doing good. I'm just getting over the COVID. Jonesy, you know I'm not going to let you get away without any trash talking. You're New England Patriots play my Cleveland Browns. Now, you know that I'm going to talk some trash if I win. You know that's going to happen. I'm glad to see you're recovering. I'm recovering, but... uh don't wish that COVID on anyone, man. So uh we're going to kick your button. Your Bill Belichick's going to come in here, and he's going to get his butt kicked in from last year, thinking that he's such a great designer and stopping the defense. New team. I wish we had our original quarterback, but, you know, he's being suspended. Hopefully you're doing all right. Got to get caught up on your shows, which I did. Some of them pretty funny. And uh, do you miss not listening to my programs? So I'm getting back in. Got uh, the Alexa put in and trying to get caught up. Hopefully you're doing well. All is well with you. Not too uh, happy about the Indians. Well, I should say the Guardians with uh, their baseball, but I didn't think they would get this far and beating the Yankees would be uh, to be the impossible win, so the impossible dream. But, uh, hey, we're doing all right. Hopefully you're doing well, and the weirdos are out there listening to you and supporting you. So I'm happy that you're uh, well, and uh, you need to make me laugh with that alligator song you haven't done the alligator news one yet so um we'll uh be talking to you my friend love you you take care and uh to all my listeners out there with jonesy you guys are great supporting him by national coffee day and giving him that and sending your regards on that and all that stuff is important I'll speak to you later. Love you. Bye-bye. Hi, Jonesy. It's Connie from Cedartown, Georgia. And I was going to say right off the top, I'm glad that you're feeling better. You sound better. So that's awesome. And I agree with, um, I can't remember who called now, about spam and how it's gross and they don't like it. Well, I'm, yeah, I can I can handle spam. I'll have a spam sandwich maybe two, three times a year. <laughs> it's that much. It's not that I don't like it. It's just that there's usually other stuff that I can't eat. So I'll do that. But, um, and two, the kilts. <laughs> That always cracks me up. I know it's a tradition, but, yeah, they, when I see men in kilts, it makes me laugh. But, um, and about the, you said cars in Florida usually wind up in canals. And that cracked me up because my aunt 
and cousins live down in Tampa, and it seems like every time we go visit them, it, between as soon as we cross the Georgia-Florida line, there's wreckers pulling cars out of canals, I swear, and we don't even go every year. We go every other year, maybe. And I'm like, it, this can't be a coincidence. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it does happen all the time. And, two, I'm glad that the Mets lost. I mean, they were already saying they would win the World Series and everything. I thought, dudes, the playoffs haven't even started yet. So, and they're already out. <laughs> so, anyway, go Braves. I know. People out there from Cleveland like Jim, and I'm glad that they made it. So that's awesome. It could be Cleveland and Atlanta again in the World Series. Who knows? But anyway, take care and love you and love all the weirdos. And, well, I forget where your ending is. My brain is just toast. But anyway, love y'all. Bye. Got an alligator in my backyard and nobody cares, nobody cares. Got an alligator in my patio and nobody cares, nobody cares. Had an alligator at my birthday party and nobody cares, nobody cares. Had an alligator in the front seat of my Volkswagen and nobody cares because it's Florida. Alligators everywhere And nobody cares in Florida There's alligators everywhere And nobody cares